I believe that anybody that's lived and died deserves to have a remembrance in this life. And for some reason, that same reverence has not been transferred to the mentally ill. There it is. There it is, right there, see? 85. You know, they were wards of the state. There's a New York State statute, number 3313, which guarantees privacy even after death. The privacy continues. I just couldn't believe that there were that many people buried. None of them had a name. In 2013, the federal HIPAA law changed. I mean, there are so many states that have done it. Washington, Oregon, Georgia. Willard Hospital was a psychiatric asylum hospital. Opened in 1869 closed in 1995. They were just written off. Postpartum epilepsy, schizophrenia, feeble-mindedness, and a lot of immigrants. Boy, immigrants from Germany, Austria, Ireland. I never had any relationship at all with Willard Cemetery. I taught for about 30 years. I retired in 06. It was not until I read the book, The Lives They Left Behind, I decided that I just had to do something about it. I don't see Gail's car. Oh, yes, I do. We created a committee Oh, over there, huh? yeah. We have unearthed these aluminum markers. That says to all of us that they did live, they did die, they had a life. I'll probably cry. My initial idea was that we would get the 6,000 people memorialized. And then it be suddenly became one person that we were going to try to get memorialized, and that was Lawrence Mocha, who was the grave digger at Willard Cemetery. He was a patient there for 50 years. Lawrence dug probably more than 1,500 graves. Mokey, he used a pick and a flat shovel mostly. He was a so short guy, he just waddled along. He dug until he died. Came in 1918, diagnosed with schizophrenia. He actually built a shack on the grounds of the cemetery. Lawrence was still digging graves at 90. I mean, he died at 90, but he was up there right up until he died. But we have no idea where Lawrence is buried. You know, it, it was never anything that anybody discussed that know. years and ago. And that's why they became wards of the state. Right. For the last three years, we have been dealing with the Office of Mental Health. New York State owns the cemetery, and in effect, they own the names. And they own, I hate to think that they own the bodies that are buried there, but to not release the names is to perpetuate the stigma of mental illness. 50 years a patient there, and now is buried there, and we have no idea where he is buried.